In this demonstration, I'll show you how to find the domain and range of the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent. The first question reads, find the domain and range of f at x is equal to sine squared x plus 5. Let's start with the domain. This right here represents the function sine x. And as you can tell, any x value that we use will output a y as evident in this curve. And it keeps going. So what we can say is that our domain are all values of x. And to write this formally, you'll start off by writing, and we're going to introduce this curly bracket, x such that x belongs to all real values. So any value that we place into this x right now will output a y. That's what this suggests. The next part is the range. And now to find the range, which is more tricky, we have to break this function down into two parts. First, let's analyze sine squared x. To find the range, the best mode of action is to look at the maximum and minimum values. You'll notice that in this curve, you have a maximum value at x is equal to pi over 2, and that gives us a y value of 1. And also, at 3 pi over 2, we have a y value of negative 1. So if we were to take pi over 2 and we evaluated it at sine, and then we multiplied this again at pi over 2, we would end up with 1 times 1, which is equal to 1. Now let's try the same thing, but this time for this value right here, this minimum. Sine at 3 pi over 2 times sine at 3 pi over 2 would give us negative 1 times negative 1, which is equal to 1. So we no longer have a wave that goes from 1 to negative 1. Let's do one more. Let's do sine at 0. So if we were to take sine at 0 and we were to multiply itself twice, we would end up with obviously 0 times 0. So therefore, what this tells us is that the range of sine squared x is between 0 and 1. Now we also have this plus 5 added to sine squared x. Now we know that when something is being added to a function, it shifts the function vertically. So in our case, every y value that we had originally will have shifted upwards by 5 units. Now since our new range is between 0 and 1, and let's write that down, our new range was between 0 and 1, shifting every point between 0 and 1 by 5, so adding 5 to this and adding 5 to this, would give us a range between 5 and 6. So therefore, to conclude, our range includes y, such that y must be between 5 and 6, where it belongs to all real values. And that's how to find the domain and range of this function. Let's move on to question number two. In question number two, they're asking us to find the domain and range of f at x is equal to cosine x minus 3. To do this problem, we'll start off by looking at the wave of a cosine function. Notice that a cosine starts at 1, and it ends at 1, and it also dips down to negative 1. So therefore, our domain, given that this is a continuous function, has to be all real values of x. But the range, on the other hand, given that we have this minus 3, means that every y value will be minus by 3. Therefore, since it is between 1 and negative 1, 1 and negative 1, what we're going to do is subtract 3 from this and 3 from this, and we end up with negative 2 and negative 4. So therefore, our range will be y such that y must be between negative 2 and negative 4 for all real y values. Let's move on to the last question. In the last question, they want us to find the domain and range of f at x is equal to 3 times tangent x. We'll start off by looking at the tangent wave. And you'll notice that there are asymptotes, which are these invisible barriers that would prevent any such y value from occurring at these x's. So for example, there's an asymptote at x is equal to pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, an asymptote at negative pi over 2, and you get the point. 
So the way we write this down generically is the following. We know that x cannot be pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, etc. So to create an algorithm or a formula that sums up any x value with this pattern, what we would write is the following. We would say 2n plus 1 times pi over 2 where x cannot equal any value to what you see on the right. And n represents any integer. How does this work? Well, let's pretend that we substituted 0 into n. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, and then you end up with pi over 2. Substitute any other value into n, you'll get a pattern that fits what you saw above. So that right there is the domain. And to write this in a formal way, x such that x cannot equal to this, and x belongs to all real values. How about the range? Now you'll notice that there's this 3 multiplied to the tangent. What does that 3 represent? That represents the amplitude. Now given that our tan wave goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, giving an amplitude of 3 does not do anything to it. In other words, it doesn't do anything to the range. So therefore, our range includes all y values such that y belongs to all real values. And that's it. That is how to find the domain and range for three separate trigonometric functions. Full, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, visit our website at studyforce.com. We're an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.